Welcome everyone back to your weekly weather updates and this evening we'll be having a look at the GFS, the GEM, the ECMWF and the GFS ensembles for the next few weeks. So now it's looking like it's going to be quite unsettled and reasonably cool over the next week to 10 days. Beyond that there are signs, uh, especially in the GFS and its ensembles, that we could be settling the weather down with some more spring-like conditions. But again it's quite far out and at the moment it's definitely looking quite westerly but cold with a southerly tracking jet stream. Do remember if you enjoy my videos, make sure you do like and subscribe. Now over the course uh, of late this week, uh, or over the course of the last couple of days really, we've had a sort of a cold north north easterly flow. And you can see we've got quite cold air in place, which means it's going to be quite cold um, uh, waking up in the morning with overnight frosts for the next couple of days. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, decent chance of reasonably cold in the day. Four, five, six, seven degrees, depending on how much cloud you get, whether you get showers. Again, showers mostly confined to the east um, and the east coast, uh, and then overnight a uh, decent, decent amount of frost if you do get uh, clearing skies. But this high pressure is going to start sinking southwards, and as it does, it's going to bring its cold air with it, and it's going to move eastwards as well. So we do have reasonably cold air over the top uh, of the country, but nothing particularly cold. So again, maybe the overnight frosts may uh, may uh, may uh, reduce a little bit, and only only sort of frost hollows will get uh, very cold. Um, but still going to be reasonably cold overnight and cool in the day with a below average temperatures. But you can see warm sector and colder sectors are lying out in the Atlantic and that's symbolic of a powering up of the low pressure and the jet stream. As you can see, low pressure does run in towards early next week. You see these small lows which are rapidly developing. Cyclogenesis is possible, which is where uh, the low pressure... Um, deepens very rapidly within 24 hours. I can't remember the exact uh, value, but there's a certain amount of uh, uh, pressure um, that it has to deepen by, uh, the exact amount of millibars for it to deepen within 24 hours uh, to, uh, to symbolize cyclogenesis, but it, it will rapidly develop um, and we will see um, these coming quite vigorous areas of low pressure. I wouldn't say definitely named storms, but if we did see this sort of developing low pressure sit more close to the country, I wouldn't rule out there being a potential named storm. But it's going to go very stormy, but still quite cold. You can see where those ice bars tighten up, even though the centre of the lows is quite far to the north of Scotland. I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, some maybe yellow or amber warnings for uh, wind with this. And that's towards the end of next week, so for our uh, Wednesday, Thursday. So it's in a reliable time frame, these sort of low pressure systems. It'd be interesting to see what the other ens uh, ensembles uh, and operational ones are looking at. But you can see the jet stream is southerly tracked. It's going through this, uh, sort of the channel uh, to the south of the UK, which is allowing these low pressure to sink further southwards, uh, bringing even stronger winds, but also cold air. You see where this air is originating is from sort of Greenland and Canada. Now it's not going to cause snow or anything. But you can see it helps power up the jet streams, um, but it also means it's going to feel pretty cold on the surface with uh, daytime highs only getting up to maybe high single digits and feeling colder with the wind and rain. Beyond that, you can see we just really have this really westerly based wind. Um, and once the weather fronts do clear through, we could be seeing sort of a typical, you know, uh, April showers uh, or, uh, sort of set up. Um, which is where you've got quite a cold air mass over coming off the Atlantic uh, with quite a strong sun, maybe not a quite, a, the sun isn't as strong as it is in April, um, so maybe not as much convection, but what you do get is you get an absolute rash of quite localised, but potentially quite heavy uh, showers are developing in from the west, coming in potentially streamers as well. Generally, rain, a few thunderstorms potentially within it, gusty winds and maybe some hail uh, and even some sleet and snow over higher ground. Again, nothing too exceptional, but it will mean sunshine and showers could be uh, quite wide uh, spread um, when we do clear the weather fronts. As we move through, you see low pressure really just does dominate the weather. We do see a bump of high pressure towards day 10, and it does start to build in the south. This is what I was saying with the potential for some more spring-like conditions. For, uh, for in, in about 10 days to 40 days time, sort of middle of March, 15th, 16th, 17th of March potentially, higher pressure to build in and to give fine conditions. Now if you look at the upper airs, it's reasonably mild, nothing exceptional, um, but would give highs 
mid-teens uh, and overnight lows not nowhere near freezing um it's still chilly overnight given it's high pressure likely see an inversion but probably not an overnight frost and in the day with sunshine it could feel quite warm you do see there is a strong temperature gradient in the atlantic which is going to be powering up the jet stream now in this scenario the jet stream goes way far to our north as this high pressure builds in but i could see in a different scenario this uh, jet stream heads straight for the UK. So it's not a done deal, this high pressure uh, is going to be dominating. Uh, it is towards the end of this GFS run, so again, it's subject to change, but you can see it really is trying to block out these deep areas of low pressures. And we, by the end of this GFS run, we are pulling up quite a balmy southerly wind. If you have a look at the upper air temperatures, could be seeing sort of heat waves chances with that maybe getting up to maybe 20 degrees potentially uh, in a few spots if we do get that te a 10 degree ice firm through regardless it'll still feel fine quite warm mild maybe towards the north and west we could be seeing some showers and some rain as the weather fronts will be out in the atlantic and could start to impact uh, the northwest especially parts of scotland as well with a bit of sh cl cloud and rain but again it's too far out really to make any concrete sort of forecast with this. If we now have a look at the GM run again, very similar in the next couple of days, and you can see low pressure start to ramp up in the, uh, in the Atlantic. Uh, cyclogenesis taking place really deep areas of low pressure and yet again next wednesday that's one we need to highlight 10th of march potential for a named storm and you're seeing this again with this sort of rapidly developing little area of low pressure with very tightly uh, packed ice parts going through sort of southern ireland into northern england the potential there again for a named storm you can see the southerly tracking jet stream and the air originating from canada very cold and you can see the uh the air coming straight across the Atlantic again, bringing those showers. You can see the upper airs, the brittly cold upper airs, are still out to our north coming of uh, the Atlantic. They're never going to really be too cold. It's going to be a co cold polar maritime air mass. So it's going to feel cold on the surface, of course, but nothing too substantial or too uh, cold for this time of year, at least. I mean, it's going to be a few degrees below average, but uh, nothing to produce any snow or anything. But if we have again look at the pressure pattern, you can see low pressure really does dominate, and we see a potential another rapidly uh, deepening area of low pressure. And as we head towards day 10, you can see high pressure starting to try and build in. Again, it'll be interesting to see how that runs on over the next couple of days to see whether that would fall in line with the GFS, which does try and build in uh, much uh, milder and dry weather. You can see it is building in from the south. It's not like, an, uh, not like a high pressure building over the top of the country or to our east. It's building up in from the south, so it's likely to build uh, build in with quite warm, if not mild, air associated with it. If we now have a look at the ECMWF, see if it follows on from the GFS and the, uh, the GM. You see again, high pressure slips away to our south and then rapidly developing areas of low pressure again. Next Wednesday, really looking at this area of low pressure potential for a name storm. And we'll be updating that near the time. As I do see with all th three runs during these really tight packed ice bars, the ECMWF is very severe. Um, unfortunately, we can't see how it passed across the UK. It'll be interesting to see how far that uh, remains intact. This really deep area of low pressure with very tight ice bars getting potentially sort of 100 mile an hour gusts again out out to sea further inland maybe only 60 70 but still substantial and i would expect if this did come off yellow or even amber warnings for wind but as we head into the longer term again very similar pattern and as we head towards day 10 you see high pressure is tr starting to influence us more less blues to our north which is means that low pressure is uh it's not deepening as much um still unsettled with a westerly wind feeling reasonably cool if not cold uh, again nothing substantially cold nothing too mild either um but again feeling sort of typical uh stormy windy weather potentially drying up and becoming more settled if this high pressure started to build in which it does look like it is but again it's too difficult to, it's too difficult to say whether it's going to uh, definitely build in uh, unless we can run on a couple more days so all all all, all of the models are currently showing very stormy conditions next week, potentially a named storm uh, on Wednesday uh, next week, so in about uh, five days' time. And then uh, it's looking like towards day 10, so the start of the following week, we could be seeing high pressure start to build back in. Again, a bit uncertain with that. And um, we'll have a look at the ensemble now, see whether they sort of 
fall in line. As you can see, uh, quite cold at the moment with upper airs, but very dry at the moment with this area's high pressure. It's going to be feeling cool, quite cold uh, overnight with frost. And then you see this big rise in temperature. That's associated with those low pressures moving in and the potential for that named storm. You can see a lot of precipitation. We'll have a look at the wind speed in a minute uh, with that um, before it does drop down as the cold front comes through uh, on the back edge. And you can see, again, a lot of low pressure, reasonably cold polar maritime air mass. Um, with a lot of rain, showers around. In the longer term, you can see temperatures recover to around average. A few of them are going quite cold, others going quite warm. The GFS is trending warm, but it's not an outlier. It's got a few on some of them is going with it. But again, precipitation is trending dry, not all going dry. So as I said, there's still a chance the jet stream still powers up across the UK. But a lot of the ensembles looking at this are having the jet stream move further northwards again with high pressure building in from the south. If we have a look at the two meter temperatures, you can see generally around around five, six degrees for the next couple of days. Overnight's around freezing. Um, and as we head through, highs getting to around nine, ten degrees, but again, feeling colder when you have that wind and rain and overnight lows uh, well above freezing around four or five degrees. Longer term, temperatures do start to lift up on average around 12, 13 degrees. Again, with any sunshine, we'll feel quite warm. Um, but again, difficult to say exactly with that. If you look at the 10 meter temperatures, you, uh, sorry, 10 meter wind speed, you can see substantial 10, 12, maybe even 14 meters per second coming in, so 11, 12 March with that name storm potentially. So it'll be very interesting to see that with that, and I'll have further updates as we get near the time. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this covering, and I'll see you again for another video soon.